Hello everybody, good morning, good night, good evening wherever you are in the world. We are happy to welcome you to our breakout session on HVC grid technology qualification. And the topic, the track we are discussing with you is testing of high voltage DC circuit breakers. Let's first introduce ourselves. Your speakers for today are... Yes, uh, hello, my name is Nadeo Banda. I'm Innovation Engineer at Kema Labs. Uh, together with my colleague, I will be presenting about the work that we have done within promotion project related with HVD circuit breaker testing. And my name is Rene Smeets. I work with Kema Labs Innovation as well. And at this place, we would like to thank the teams that worked with us together in the labs, you see the photos on the bottom side, the teams of Mitsubishi Electric, Hitachi, ABB, and Cybreak, who all brought their high voltage circuit breakers to our labs. Looking at the agenda of today, uh, first we would like to give an overview of HVDC switch gear, then we would like to point out why HVDC breakers are essential for future HVDC grids. Before we start to talk about testing, we need to know a little bit more about faults in HVDC grids. So we show you a few fundamental studies about that. Then we try to make clear why interrupting a fault current in DC is different from AC. Then we will go into some details on, on what actual HVC breakers are installed in the world. So what is the technology state status there? And of course, we will conclude with our major parts on how to test the breakers. What is the, what I, what is the actual status there? This is a schedule of uh, a switching station of a HVDC uh, switch yard, and this is focused especially on HVDC switch gear. Well, HVDC switch gear in a general sense is intended to control the power flow. And in a, a secret working group, we have identified a number of HVDC switch gear, like disk connectors, like earthing switches, even high speed earthing switches you see here. We uh, talked about transfer switches and on bypass switches. And in the photos here, you can see a number of this specialized HVDC uh, switch gear. What has not been discussed yet is the HVDC GIS. Uh, one part of promotion was on the long time testing of HVDC GIS. We are not discussed it here because there is a separate promotion contribution on that. What the topic of today's talk, of course, is on HVDC circuit breakers because in this schedule here, it's a, simple, it's a simple symbol, but in fact, it's a very complicated device. And uh, we will now explain to you what the actual need of HVDC circuit breakers is. Yes, coming to why do we need HVDC circuit breakers? Of course, if we just look at what is happening uh, in, uh, at the moment, only in Europe, more than 50 HVDC projects are in operation today and almost all of them are point-to-point -point connections. And it has been predicted also within promotion project that by 2050, more than 200 gigawatts of energy needs to be evacuated from North Sea. But to evacuate such a, such a large uh, energy, it's not, it cannot be done only by building point-to-point -point connections, but at some point we need to interconnect them to get the same advantage that we get from AC interconnections today. So what is the challenge? Of course, if we interconnect HVDC projects, like you see it here, uh, the main challenge is how to clear a fault in, in such a grid, for example. It could be a fault on a cable or on, on an overhead line, that's what you see on, on the photo. So currently, well, the available options are to clear from AC side. That means you block the infeed of power flow into the DC side by Opening AC circuit breakers, that means there is a power flow interaction not only on the faulty part, also including the healthy part of the grid. The other option is to use converters, converters which are features of blocking infeed of fault currents into the DC side. Then this will also stop, current, uh, stop power flow for a moment and then that might not be also ideal. But the most preferable solution is, of course, to use DC circuit breakers, which are installed at the ends of 
transmission lines or cables that will only isolate the faulty section without affecting the healthy part of the grid and that is the ideal solution so coming to the main issues of course we need to understand what hvdc circuit breakers have to deal with in an hvdc grid there are no operational ex experiences which are available today there are no international standards which we have to which we can refer to to define requirements of hvdc circuit breakers so at the beginning of promotion project we took a step of, de of developing a hypothetical dc grid here you see five terminal bipolar hvdc grid rated at 320 kb all of which are interconnected with cables because we were focusing on offshore grid so what we did is we apply faults at different locations to understand how does the fault condition in hvdc grid develop and what are the impact what components are uh, contributing to the fault and at the later stage we apply uh, models of hvdc grids uh, uh, sorry models of hvdc circuit breakers in such a grid so that these models will interact the fault current to understand the stresses on HVDC circuit breakers. These stresses are translated to test requirements at later stages, uh, which we will come back to that later. So when we analyze a fault current in, uh, in a generic HVDC grid, here you see a converter station connected to multiple links, link one, two, three, and so forth. Then what will happen when a fault occurs on one of these uh, links, there are contributions. The first contribution is from the converter side, of course, what you see in blue trace. And then, of course, the total current flowing is through a circuit breaker on a faulty line is what you see on the, on the red trace on the top graph. What happens after, after the fault occurs is the first step is a discharge of any capacitive elements, including the submodule capacitors, which are available in a converter station. Of course, those discharges will damage the components of a converter, so the converter will take action, that is, blocking a converter. When a converter blocks, it will limit the damage to its own power electronic components, but it does not prevent the infeed of fault currents from the AC side to the DC side. And, of course, converter blocking means also it cannot control the power flow anymore, so that means the voltage collapses, that's what you see on the bottom graph. And if we look at what contributes to the fault after converter blocks is the AC side, which depends on the strength of the connected AC grid, and also the total current through the circuit breaker will be depending on the number of connections, which is connected at the DC, uh, DC bus. After the simulation work, we try to make it clear what is the difference between current interruption in AC and DC. And for that, we would like to show a video here, which is showing how uh, a circuit is, 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 is made. First of all, we are going to uh, uh, show you that the operator is making uh, a, a closed circuit. He is closing the circuit by closing the switch now by letting a current of maybe a few amps, maybe five amperes or so, will flow through, through the closed circuit now. And a proof of the fact that the current is flowing is the, 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 the red heating of the spiral resistor there. And soon you will see how the circuit will be opened. So if you look well, there is a tiny spark at the moment the uh, switch is taken out of the of of the the, the knife is taken out of the switch so uh, soon he will do this again and you see again uh, almost no action of arcing or sparking can be seen there so now it's time to switch over to DC, so uh, the operator is switching over to 220 volts DC now. Again, a current of a few amps is flowing, and please look now what happens when the operator is opening the switch. You see a big arc, at least much bigger than the one that is seen before. And please note, we are speaking only about 5 amperes at 220 volts. In the case of HV grids, we are speaking about thousands of amps, up to 25 thousands of amps at voltages of 220 kV and maybe up to 500 kV. 
So this is much bigger than uh, than the simple the simple experiment you saw here. Having seen the live experiments, it is good to have a short look into a more fundamental thing on what is the difference between current interruption in AC and DC. Well, in AC, of course, the current swings hands, hands and force, so we can compare that to a swing. And current interruption in AC means we have to capture the swing at the most preferred condition. Well, and that is, of course, at the moment the swing reverses sign, because then there is no kinetic energy in the grid. So that is the strategy of AAC interruption, interrupting the current when there is zero kinetic energy in the grid. So that, of course, is very difficult to do in the case of DC, because if we again transfer a mechanical analogy to the DC case, we look at a big ball, a heavy mass, which is rolling down a slope, and you must stop the motion of that mass. You can only do that in one way. That means you have to, to create a buffer to stop the motion. And you must also do that fast, because if you do not do that fast enough, the, the speed, the energy of the ball will increase. So setting up a buffer means in electrical terms, you must develop a counter voltage, which is higher than the voltage of the grid. So that is the main strategy of interrupting current in DC. Well, giving you an impression of what is the, what is the amount of energy we speak about, if we have a 15 kilo ampere short circuit current in a 100 kilometer overhead line, this means an energy is stored in the system of 11 megajoule. If you compare that to the mechanical energy of that ball or a train, that is the same energy as contained in a 30 ton train running at 100 kilometers per hour that a buffer must stop in a matter of milliseconds of time. So that gives you some idea of the challenges of designing HVDC circuit breakers. Yes, HVDC circuit breakers use different strategies than AC circuit breakers to interrupt DC current, of course. Uh, as just mentioned, an HVDC circuit breaker is not a simple device. It's now uh, rather a complicated device consisting of a lot of components in different branches. It, it, it has branches which will conduct normal current and also it has branches which will produce a counter voltage, the buffer that René just mentioned. How does it operate? Of course, when a fault happens, there is a rising fault current, you see it in, in this diagram. And the breaker produces a buffer, what you see it here, uh, uh, and then, of course, the current will be interrupted. So normally, current will be flowing through this low impedance branch for uh, during normal operation. And then when there is a situation of uh, current interrupted, like fault happens, then it will interrupt in that path, which is basically local current interruption. And that will lead current commutation into high impedance branch, which is basically a commutation branch producing that counter voltage, the TIV. Once the TIV is produced, it will be maintained by uh, an energy absorbing branch, which is basically metal oxide surge arresters, and the current is suppressed. Once current is suppressed, the system will recover and the circuit breaker will be subjected to a DC recovery voltage from the system. There are different technologies of HVDC circuit breakers, and there are two main leading ones, of course. The first one being active current injection technology, which will use mechanical components together with current injection branches. The current injection branch can be a precharged capacitor or a power electronic excitation circuit. Here you see photos of different realizations of mechanical H, uh, active current injection HVDC circuit breaker realized in different parts of uh, the world. For example, in, in China, you see it here on the top graph. And in promotion, there is uh, the one on the bottom left corner uh, from Mitsubishi Electric, which we have demonstrated within the project framework. And next to that is a side break concept. I think I will come back to that later. The second technology is hybrid technology, which uses uh, power electronics together with mechanical components to achieve DC current interruption. This has also been realized, especially in China. It has been put in operation in two different projects, Zhaoshan and Yangbei, I think, in 500 kV system. 
Here you see on the uh, bottom right corner the, uh, uh, the the DC circuit breaker from FVB, which was uh, demonstrated in uh, in promotion project also. When testing HVDC circuit breakers and when standards need to be developed, it's quite important to know what are the actual critical stresses on these devices. So we looked into detail at the, in, at the interruption process. First of all, there is of course a steady state and all of a sudden a fault starts to rise. That means the fault current starts to rise with a very high DI by the T. And as soon as possible, within milliseconds time, the circuit breaker needs to act with a counter voltage, as you can see here. And it, it has to maintain that counter voltage for a certain time, because during that time, the fault current is suppressed to zero, as you can see here in the blue curve. Well, as soon as the current has reached uh, the, the phase of interruption, then the circuit voltage, the system voltage will uh, recover and will, be, uh, will reapply across the breaker uh, again. Well, based on this, we have defined a number of, 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 of critical stages. And with that stages, we have designed test circuits that are able to replica replicate such stresses as in surface. So first of all, of course, the test circuit must have a fault current rise. Second, the, 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 the test circuit needs to be able to be able to deal with the counter voltage of the breaker. Then the circuit must give the circuit breaker the opportunity to withstand the overvoltage of the uh, TFV for a sufficiently long time. And at the same time, it, is, it needs to be proved that the circuit breaker is able to absorb the remaining energy from the grid. Well, as soon as the current has been interrupted, it, is, it needs to also be proved that the DC voltage has to be withstood by the circuit breaker. So all in all, test circuits, test circuits need to be designed to cover all the stresses that occur in service. Okay, well, coming to the test methods and circuits, of course, as you Rene just mentioned, uh, there are critical st uh, stresses that we have identified, but the problem is there are no circuits which can ensure those critical stresses when testing DC circuit breakers, especially before the tests we are focusing on proof of concepts, but in promotion we are focusing on rated performance demonstration. What are the available test circuits? The first one would be, of course, ideally a DC source, which is, for example, a rectifier source. The problem is, as uh, Rene, you just mentioned, that the TIV produced by the circuit breaker will be imposed onto the test installation also. That means all the components of the test installation must withstand that, and that's the main challenge. If, for example, a 500 kV HVD circuit breaker will produce about 800 kV TIV, which the components will have to withstand. And for this reason, such a solution does not exist in any of test laboratories for use for of DC circuit breaker testing. The other solution, which is most commonly used, is uh, based on charged capacitors. That means by pre-charging a capacitor and discharging it through a reactor, a circuit breaker, a DC circuit breaker, can stop the discharge of such a capacitor. But the main challenge with this is also to apply rated stresses to a DC circuit breaker. You need a big chunk of uh, uh, capacitors, which is not available again anywhere in the uh, in test laboratories. The third option is using a charger reactor. Basically, reactors can also be charged with current uh, to be able to test DC circuit breakers. But for this, you need high quality reactors also reactors that can handle large currents, of course. And this is also quite a challenge. Another most commonly used is using AC sources, short circuit generators at low power frequency, with a main focus on producing quasi-DC current. That has also been in use in many uh, HVDC circuit breaker developments. So, therefore, in Chemalabs, we took a uh, challenge of developing a test method that can ensure uh, a service-like stresses to HVDC circuit breaker. Our method also uses short circuit generators operated at low power frequency, but our focus is not only producing a quasi DC current, but a quasi DC voltage. As an example, if you look at uh, a voltage wave of 16.7 Hertz, you will find that 
for about 30 milliseconds, this voltage will stay positive. But if you cut out a part of this voltage, we call this an opportunity window, the voltage stays more or less like DC. And if I zoom it in, you will find it for up to 10 to 15 milliseconds, there is a DC-like voltage. So if you can apply a short circuit on a specific point on this voltage wave, you can get a fast rising current, which whose rate of rise can be controlled by a reactor, of course. And then the, an HVDC circuit breaker is tested in such a way that it will prevent this current from, it, from, uh, from rise at some, some point. So it does so by, of course, developing a, a counter voltage, a voltage which is higher than the source producing a short circuit. That's what you see here in, in the bottom graph. So the current is suppressed, the blue uh, dashed stress here, only if that counter voltage, the black dashed stress, exceeds the source voltage. In doing so, it will absorb significant amount of energy. That means our test method can supply not only current and voltage, but also the energy needed for testing. Of course, there are challenges associated with the test method. The first one is reduced available power when you operate short circuit generators at low power frequency. That means you might need to connect multiple short circuit generators in parallel to bring back the power to a desired level. Also, the available output voltage uh, from short circuit generators reduce proportionally with frequency. That means you need multiple short circuit transformers to step up the voltage to a desired level. At Chemalabs, we have six short circuit generators which can be combined together in parallel and up to 10 step-up transformers which can be used for testing uh, HVDC circuit breakers up to 500 kV. So what I just presented is, of course, the core short circuit power source, but that's not only it for testing HVDC circuit breaker. The complete test circuit is shown here in the schematic. It has different features and different parts that can serve different purposes. The first part, as I already mentioned, is the power source, short circuit generators and transformers together with important switches. But we can also provide a load like current before a short circuit is introduced, that's what you see here. And then a very critical aspect is to protect the test object and also the test installation from uh, an expected overcurrent, that is an overcurrent protection circuit you see in this blue ring, rectangle. And then, of course, the test object is expected to clear the rising current at some step, as I mentioned, by producing a counter voltage. And a very important aspect that we need to know here is it's not only about producing, but it has to also maintain that voltage for sufficient duration. And then the test circuit must supply sufficient energy during this period so that the circuit breaker maintains this voltage and withstands it. After current is interrupted, it will be subjected to DC recovery voltage, which is in a test circuit supplied from a separate source in a synthetic way. Altogether, we see four different stages of current interaction. The first one being internal current commutation, which is basically a measure of the speed of operation of DC circuit breaker. And then the generation of a transient interaction voltage. As I said, this is important step to produce and maintain this voltage. And then energy absorption which is followed by DC recovery with stun. So that in such a way we can apply complete stress in one test shot to an HVDC circuit breaker. HVDC circuit breakers, they need to manage large current, large voltage, large energy as we, we have seen. So this means large test in installations are needed to provide these. Well, this is an overview of the Kima test lab in which all the testing of the promotion circuit breakers have been done. So our power source is short circuit generators, as was point pointed out. Uh, these need specialized making and breaking switches in order to interrupt the current in case the, the DC breaker is not able to do that for one reason or another. Then we use step up transformer to bring the voltage to the level we need it. For the application of DC voltage after the circuit breaker has interrupted the current, we have large uh, precharged capacitor banks which supply the DC voltage that we need. Here is a picture inside of the test hall. What you see here is some reactors that are needed to adjust the amount of current that we need. What you see here is uh, one, of, uh, one of a number of AC breakers that we need to compose the circuit of. Please note how 
compact and small these AC breakers are compared to DC breakers. And uh, last but not least, you see two sets of spark gaps that uh, can supply current and voltage in a very, uh, a very short and very fast way. So a lot of specialized devices are needed here. You have already understood by now, I guess, that uh, HVC breakers are very complicated devices in which a number of uh, specialized components are needed and are used. Um, in many cases, we see standard components are used in a non-standard apply application. One of the uh, uh, components that all uh, HVC breakers have are uh, switching gaps and very fast drives. So these are new. They are specially developed for uh, application in HVC circuit breakers. So that means the stresses, the non-standard stresses to the standard components need special attention in standards and uh, tests. Another uh, non-standard use of standard components are the semiconductors that are used in such devices. In standard converters, uh, semiconductors are switching all the time. In HVC breakers, they switch only in case they need it in the special conditions of a fault, so in a, in a very rare condition. Well, last but not least, uh, a key part of uh, HVC breakers are metal oxide surge arresters. Uh, in normal conditions, these devices are intended to absorb over voltages from the grid. Here in this applications, they are used to absorb the energy from the grid. And very good care in the design of these devices is uh, needed in order to ensure that a proper sharing of current along the columns of these devices are needed. Uh, within the project, we did some specialized research on a mock-up on an experimental type of HVDC breaker to see where the limits of applications of vacuum circuit breakers and the limits of application of metal surge arresters are. Well, then, of course, it all boils down to a demonstration that the three technologies that we are having at hand in the promotion projects uh, fulfill the promises that they, that they have. For that, we have organized three live demonstrations in the lab. At the left-hand side, you see the active current injection circuit breaker of Mitsubishi which is uh, showing the current interruption at the oscillograms of current and voltage as you see below. In the middle you see the ABB hybrid type of, bre of breakers that we tested at the beginning of this year. And as we speak, we are still waiting to test on August 19 the Cybreak uh, ATKV uh, circuit breaker. So we have proven that these devices uh, can fulfill what they should do. So as you can see, this is the final slide. I hope we did not try to put too much knowledge in a short time. That is always the type of mistakes we make. So we would like you to thank you for your time. And if you have some further, further questions, I'm sure you are able to find us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much from my side as well. You can find the money project resources in the promotion website. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Simon Nier and I work at Cybreak AB of Sweden. We offer DC circuit breakers based on the VARC technology. In this presentation, I will tell a bit more about the VARC technology. The VARC circuit breaker is a current injection type circuit breaker with a vacuum interrupter as its main braking element. A circuit diagram of the main circuit of the VARC circuit breaker is shown to the left. During normal operation, the line current flows through the main interrupter, which, which is shown at the top of the diagram. When the circuit breaker receives a trip command, the contacts in the main interrupter are quickly separated and an arc between the contacts of the interrupter is formed. When sufficient contact gap has been achieved in the main interrupter, the voltage source converter starts to switch, thereby driving an oscillating current of increasing amplitude through the main interrupter. This current is superimposed on the line current, which also flows through the main interrupter. When the oscillating current reaches the same amplitude as the line current, 
the current through the main interrupter momentarily reaches zero, which forces the arc in the main interrupter to extinguish. The line current is then forced to instead flow into the surge arrestor, which results in a very high counter voltage drop across the circuit breaker. This voltage drop in turn forces the line current to zero. The VARC technology combines very fast operation time with a compact design and very low losses in normal operation. An example of how an interruption event might look like is shown in the diagram to the right. Voltages are shown in the top subplot with the VEC output voltage in red and the voltage across the main interrupter in blue. Currents are shown in the bottom subplot with the oscillating current in red and the line current in blue. The red current is the one labeled IP in the circuit diagram to the left. Development of the VARC technology at Cybreak AB was initiated in 2014. The first prototypes above a few hundred amps and volts were tested in 2015. The sizes of the prototypes grew and in late 2016 a prototype which interrupted 5 kiloamps against 2 10 kilovolts was tested. Early next year 10 kiloamps against 10 kilovolts was achieved. The work on extension towards higher volt voltages was then initiated. The first Thomson coil actuators of own design were used in 2017, and at the end of that year, a circuit breaker capable of interruption of 10 kiloamps against 20 kilovolts was tested in laboratory. In 2018, a circuit breaker module prototype was tested at KEMA. This module achieved interruption of 10 kiloamps against 40 kilovolts in 3 milliseconds. Laboratory tests in 2019 achieved interruption of 12 kiloamps against 40 kilovolts in 2.5 milliseconds, and the recently tested 3 module stack achieved interruption of 12 kiloamps against 120 kilovolts in less than 2 milliseconds. This most recent test marks the TRL7 of the technology. The VARC technology is now ready for deployment in an HVDC grid. Both the technology and the basic circuit breaker design are ready. The next step towards acceptance of the technology is likely a pilot installation. DC circuit breaker technology can in many cases be applied also for AC current limiting applications. In the case of the VARC, Cybreak has recently been awarded an order on current limiting circuit breakers for railway feeding applications in Sweden. So development efforts will be focused on this in the near future. The grid in which these circuit breakers will be installed is single phase 15 kV 16 2 thirds Hz. After a successful deployment of the VARC in medium voltage AC applications, the acceptance of the technology is expected to be widespread enough that HVDC markets also will be open for the VARC. My name is Takashi Inagaki and I will be presenting on behalf of Mitsubishi Electric. The title of my presentation is Status and Future Development of Mechanical DC Circuit Breaker with Active Current Injection. In Mitsubishi Electric, we have been developing the DC circuit breaker, which uses only the mechanical parts. It is composed of three branches with different functions as shown in the schematic diagram on the left hand side. The circuit breaker branch has a main interrupter unit which uses a vacuum interrupter. Main current will flow through this branch in the normal operation and it will interrupt the load and fault current depending on the situation. Parallel to the circuit breaker branch, there is a current injection branch which is composed of reactor, high speed making switch and capacitor. The capacitor is charged to a predetermined voltage level before the current interruption. Also, there is a metal oxide surge arresters MOSA, in the energy dissipation branch in order to suppress the over voltage, typically set to 1.5 times higher than the system voltage. A detailed interruption principle will be explained by using the schematic of current and voltage behavior during the current interruption shown at the right hand side. A current is at the bottom with red line and voltage is on the top with green line. As soon as the VI received the opening command after the fault occurrence in the system, its contacts start moving apart. When the contact is open enough to withstand TIV, high frequency resonant current is superimposed on the fault current in order to create the current zero. As the current reaches to zero, it will be interrupted in VI. 
After the current interruption, TIV is applied across the breaker while the MOSA dissipates the energy. The magnitude of the injected current is designed to be large enough to cause current zero in both polarities. This is the picture of the 160 to 200 kV mechanical DC circuit breaker with active current injection that was tested at Kima Laboratories. The main interrupter is composed of two vacuum interrupters connected in series, rating of 80 to 100 kV per each. There is high-speed making switch which looks same as the main interrupter, which is also composed of two switches, capacitor and reactor for the current injection, and also MOSA for energy dissipation. The testing current of 0.2 to 16 kA in both polarities are successfully interrupted within 7 milliseconds. In this slide, I will introduce the future development of the mechanical DC circuit breaker along with the conceptual design of 525 to 600 kV DC circuit breaker. Mechanical DC circuit breaker can be designed in both AIS type and GIS type. The voltage class can be increased by increasing the number of the series connected VIs and rating of 525 to 600 kV can be achieved by connecting 6 VIs in series. Since the mechanical DC circuit breaker is outdoor usage, the building to implement the breaker and also the clean room and cooling systems are not needed. In case of the GIS type, more information including 3D model can be found at digital exhibition but the components of the mechanical DC circuit breaker, such as main interrupter and high-speed making switch, can be placed in an insulating gas inside the earth enclosure with pressure, which helps to realize the DC circuit breaker with small footprint compared to an AIS type. Also, it can be downsized together with the other switch gears, such as earthing switch and disconnector switch, and the offshore platform can be made significantly compact. We have a technology of DCGIS that is extensively proven by the only one actual operational experience in the world in Japan. Therefore, with the combination of these technologies, we can provide a reliable DC circuit breaker. And this is all for my presentation, and please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Hello, and welcome to a brief introduction on ABB Hybrid HVDC Breaker. My name is Arman Hassanpur and currently working as R&D Manager in the Grid Integration Division of uh, Hitachi ABB. I've been leading the Hybrid HPDC Breaker project along with a great team during the past years. And today I gladly will share the application, the development outline, and at the end, the technology readiness of this product. Looking at the current overall power systems in Europe and also worldwide shows that the integration of renewable energies and interconnection YHVDC system is unavoidable. And we are basically walking towards the HVDC grids. And of course, without any doubt, HVDC breaker is the key enabler of the mesh DC grids. Uh, it worth to mention that uh, the offshore grid as you can see in the right hand side picture, is not only on the discussion in North Sea, but uh, also it is a hot topic in Baltic Sea area as well. We in Hitachi ABB started the development of hybrid HVDC breaker back in 2010 by investigating the characteristics of some initial samples and the components which had on the time and those uh, investigation led us to proof of concept tests in 2012 when we first introduced the ATKV prototype functionality test and we published it in Sigre Bologna. The development of the breaker continued by intensive studies and tests on the system and also subsystem level to ensure a reliable design which can handle severe operation stresses. And ultimately, the full scale test on 350 kV uh, prototype performed in Kema as part of the promotion project, where we tested more than a prototype. It was a complete system, including the full control and full scale hybrid HVDC breaker. A vast range of current were tested from few amps up to 20 kA, and realistic counter voltage were applied on the test object to resemble the component stress in the real operation. 
At the end, I would like to mention that the hybrid HVDC breaker technology is ready for the market. The modular design of hybrid HVDC breaker enabled the technology to be ready up to 640 kV and also 30 kA as interruption current level. Even though the hybrid HVDC breaker system is a new product, but it is based on the full proven components such as Stackpack BIGTs and MAC control system, which are already applied to the field in previous projects. As an interesting design feature, I should mention that there is no commutation capacitor in hybrid HVDC breaker, which means less risk for the fire and also fast operation independent from the different current level. And also worth noting that the, besides the braking capability, the hybrid HVDC breaker will be exposed to continuous full load current, which requires great reliability to ensure uninterruptible grids operation. So the hybrid HVDC breaker is equipped with self-protection feature and also inbuilt redundancy. I'm closing this presentation by pointing out that HVDC breaker is not a vision anymore. It is a reality now. Thanks uh, for your attention and uh, do not hesitate to reach me for any questions or queries.